This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. The devastating scenes at Bondi Junction are beyond words or understanding. There was just victims sort of every 50 metres. It was just absolute chaos. Flags at half-mast at the request, of course, of the Prime Minister today. As we think of the families and those that lost their lives uh, on Saturday afternoon at Bondi Junction. A uh, very confusing time um, for anyone that was in Bondi Junction at the time, not knowing what was going on, um, especially the people, four people that work in there. One man who does works in a luggage store up on one of the higher levels is Johan Philip, and he joins us now. Johan, thank you very much for coming on the show, buddy. No worries. Johan, can Welcome. you take us to the point where you realise that something, it wasn't your average day at Bondi Junction, it's something had actually gone wrong? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the yeah, commotion kind of unfolded in front of us. But uh, at, at one point, after we'd locked ourselves in and we're kind of waiting to see what had happened, a lady came to the door, banged to kind of be let in. And I looked at her and I was like, well, of course, I've got to let her in. So we quickly unlocked the door to get her in. And as that was happening, the attacker fell behind her and the knife kind of fell down right in front of us. And we, I looked at this customer who was in there with me and we just went, whoa. And quickly pulled her and locked the door and the attacker just got up casually with his with the knife which is about as big as you know my forearm and jogged across to another store and then just took out another lady um and at that point we uh, saw that the security guards in front of us had also been, both been cut open on the floor um and then we're like well this is something and we just freaked out completely and yeah yeah so, uh, so- johan what what time was that oh uh, that would have been like i don't know 3 30 ish or so um something like that. Okay, because I, I, I know that um, when I was in contact with people who mm. who knew people at the centre, that it must be, it, w- it was incredibly confusing to know what was going on. And I, I know that you you were there and you could see things with your own mm-hmm. eyes. But w- what was what was the first lot of information that you were given? I mean, did you did you know that he was he was a, a lone attacker? Mm. Did, like, what on earth did you think yeah. was happening? I think that's the thing I, I didn't realize. I've seen these things on TV before, and you know, in America especially, and go, oh, this is what I would have done, and this is how it would have gone down. But that's after the facts in front of you. There is just nothing. It's just chaos. There's just people. There's noises. There's things happening, and just nobody knows anything. And only about an hour later, uh, a police officer had walked by with us to locked in, um, and he said, yeah, there was an attacker. We think there's another one. Stay in there and stay locked. And that's the only information we got the whole day. And then later on, probably sometime later after, we kind of saw armed SWAT and things like that uh, walk by the store. Uh, we were eventually escorted by um, police um, outside. Um, and only after that, at that point, we pieced things together by talking to other people who had witnessed things, including, you know, we were placed with the two men who had held the baby um, before they were taken over by paramedics and things like that. So only then did we really piece together what had happened. So, Johan, let's go back. You, you, so when you opened that door to let mm-hmm. that lady in and he fell, like how far are we talking away that he was away from you guys? Did he spot you? Yeah, so, yeah, Margaret was her name that uh, was the lady that opened the door for. She, he, he, he fell, the attacker fell like we're talking two arms length. Um, yeah. So... It was it was very very close to him, but he fell with his back to us yeah. um, on his right side, and so he was looking away. And of course, after we pulled Margaret in and locked the door, we, me and James, kind of the, the customer that was with him, we just froze to just see if he would see us because it's yes. just it's all glass doors and windows, and like he would have definitely seen us. Um, and he didn't. He just landed up picking up the knife and like jogging past, um, and so we kind of hid behind like a cement. Uh, boulder type thing which is part of the store and uh, and he and I just saw him point blank open up another lady on the other side well, was um, was he saying anything Johan was he yelling uh, anything out or no he was just uh, quite calm no lots of people have asked that and um, no he was very very still and very calm even when he fell over he got up pretty you know nonchalantly and went about his day I mean I think now we know that he was schizophrenic or at least that was something I, I'd seen online I don't know but yeah, he seemed pretty still to me. Okay, and when you said that he fell, that was just from his own stumbling, or he'd lost well, footing. He he hadn't been pushed, or that's the thing. I don't know that for a fact. I mean, somebody suggested well, somebody suggested that he was actually lunging at Margaret. I don't know. 
Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure. I know he had just also sliced open the two security guards at that point. Um, and, he had, and like, you know, all this happened in less than 2.5 seconds. So um, I don't know what, how he actually went down at that point. It is possible that security guards were the ones that had, for, you know, sort of tussled with him to, yep. to lead to that. Yeah. But I'm sure there'll be footage of that in the near future. Okay. So. And when you're talking about the doors being shut and, and, mm. and letting the woman, um, Margaret, in, um, mm. can you explain to us what the security is like there? Because there's a lot of stories about doors shutting automatically so that the yes. doors the doors of the store that you worked in did you have to w- w- were you yeah. given some kind of signal to lock those doors or no, do no, no. do they happen no so so in the in the bigger kind of uh, department store style ones david jones my my understanding is yeah they have shutter doors that roll down yeah. same with like a kmart or a big w because they're much bigger ours is, would be considered like a boutique store so it's two okay. doors we lock it we have the key sure. um and uh so no there's no, nothing so automated about it um when there is uh, like a, a an emergency evacuation siren the bigger department stores have emergency exits and things like that so the shutters generally go down and everybody goes out through the emergency exits but stores like ours we have to go out the front lock the main doors um and then and then leave that way so we just yeah we just locked ourselves in um which was yeah uh, yeah really it was it was my choice yeah. to do that at that point johan do you know you, t- you mentioned the two security guards do you know if one of them was the man faraz sahar who was actually um yeah. killed he unfortunately yeah. died do you know if 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 that was him yeah, I believe. Yeah, I believe that was him. I think I, I, we saw both of them kind of walk. Two of them walk up as um, this lady Margaret had banged on the door, and in the five four seconds that we'd let her in, um, we then realised that the attack obviously fell over. We looked up, and I believe his name was Faraz. Yes, he was on the floor bleeding out, and it, it just it all just happened so quickly. This, this was a um, man, this was a man, if you're not uh, aware, Johan, who mm. had fled Pakistan for his own safety uh, mm. in Australia 12 months ago, and it was his first yeah. day on the job at Bondi Junction as a security Yeah, I, I read something to that effect. I mean, yeah, I, I really, yeah, th- 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 oh that story God. to me is a lot. I, I myself am a migrant. I moved from overseas to Australia years ago but, uh, and tried to, you know, do something with my life, and it's kind of crazy to flee somewhere like Pakistan and then to land up in a situation like this. <laughs> How are you, Johan? I want to ask, uh, because mm. last night I, I was thinking of something, some of the scenes that you would have seen leaving that place yesterday or what you mm. saw. Mate, I, I, I don't know how you slept last night, and I know that that is something that you'll never be able to erase from your memory. So how are you mm. feeling? Yeah, it was, I didn't sleep the night before at all. And uh, somebody said to me this morning that uh, I was on the project and I didn't even realise that, to be honest, um, I, I, until I saw it. And even then I was like, who is talking? What is happening? When did that yeah. happen? I kind of slept last night. Um, and this morning I went, oh, gosh, what have I been doing? What, what like At this point it seems a little bit, uh, you know, talking on radio, I think like that seems All a little bit self-indulgent. Yeah, just, yeah, just a bit yucky and just like, what am I doing? Well, well, I look, I think, I think, um, just, just so you know, I know what you mean. It, mm. it feels as though why am I at, at telling the stories of, of other people, but this is also mm. your story, and I know that people are asking these questions and yeah. people were in contact, whether whether it was with you or just amongst groups of friends yesterday, asking as mm. many questions because they yeah. just really. They really care. I think that all of mm. Sydney yesterday was thinking about people like you, about the, the family of the mother who passed. They want to know yeah. about the baby. They want... Yeah. So, mm. d- d- just so you know, I hope that mm. it, it, it sits a little better with you because it, it comes from a place of absolute mm. care and, yeah. and gratefulness that... That people weren't there themselves. It's think, just awful. I think too, yeah. Yeah, Johan, your your story helps piece it together for everybody because I think we mm. all sit here in complete disbelief. Yeah. So you're adding the pieces to the puzble. The mm. Johan, the person you saw the attacker take off to then mm. g- go and further attack. Do you know mm. who that was? Was it a? Did you mention it was a woman? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. It was a lady. She was wearing a, a blue top. I think that was a lady that uh, was was stabbed in the shoulder. Um, I think it might even be the lady that Andrew Reid, the Bondo lifeguard, landed up helping. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. Again, I, I don't know. Like, the, it'll be pieced together a little bit more because when we walked out of the store and we were finally escorted out, 
um, there was there were essentially bodies everywhere. Um, our floor was the, f- and we we had to we walked through the, the crime scene if you like, um, because the shooter was above us and had been shot. So there was something else happening upstairs, um, and so we passed yeah a number of bodies and just a lot of the carnage uh, at that point. So I don't know where exactly that was, but at, at, from our van- from our vantage point from my right there was one person on the ground. And on the left, there was a security guard, two other bodies at the cafe, and one all the way on the other side oh. where the coal escalators were. So, yeah, there, there must have been many moments of just the confusion of not knowing what to do. If you're mm-hmm. saying that the doors are shut, um, yeah, and th- there are people on the other side of the glass that you you don't know whether should I be putting my hand up to help is Mm -hmm. there an an instinct to 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 get out there and help but then also be concerned for your own safety i mean i think if any 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 other members of the public or something like that would have come to the doors i mean i think me and even the other people in the store would have wanted to let them in um but once we had locked the doors the second time once margaret was in we all kind of disappeared to the back and were quiet because we were afraid there was a gun and then mm-hmm. not long after that, we did hear gunshots. So we then we didn't we didn't we didn't come out of the back for a while. So nobody would have even known to enter um, or, or try to get into the store because it would have seemed like there was no one there. Yeah. Um, but everyone was just running past to get out yeah. as opposed to try and get into a store. The other thing too is, I mean, I was there about a week ago and mm-hmm. the alarm was going off. Yep. And I think you want to, and, and I only thought of this when I saw the footage and I heard the same alarm ringing. Mm. And in those moments, I think you want to believe that everything's okay. And therefore, I was there mm. with the family. And in my mind, I went, well, we can't see any smoke, so I won't really react. We'll continue yeah. on our day of shopping. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was no announcement to whether it was a training drill or um, mm-hmm. an exercise that had been planned. So. Yeah. If for a lot of shoppers, I think, you know, uh, Australians like to believe that everything's okay and we should believe that everything's okay because yeah. these things are a rarity. Um, but in that moment, I'm sure there was a lot of people that continued about their day and thought, well, I can't yes. see any danger, so I won't act now. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, we, we did exactly the same thing. Like, that, this would have been, I've been at this, this, this centre now probably eight months, eight, nine months. It would probably be the 15th time the alarm's gone off and it's never been anything ever. Um, and you know, ordinarily we'll wait, and then we'll get an announcement saying, "Oh, sorry, guys, somebody tripped something or false alarm." Mm. But uh, okay, yeah, even when it was going, until we saw the signs on the all the kind of directories change to "Please evacuate, please evacuate," then we were like, "Okay, haven't seen this before." Well, thank you very much for opening up to us, Johan. We know how difficult that is. That's something that you will never be able to erase from your memory, mate. But um, we really appreciate you coming on the show and, and sharing your story this morning. No worries. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, take Thanks, care. Thanks, Johan. Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.